It is time to eat the boogs and drink the sewage. Life, as we know, is not going well for many people right now, and it's mainly because everything's more expensive, yada yada yada. We talk about this a lot recently because, honestly, it's just on everybody's mind constantly. It's the one thing that everybody is worried about, and the reason for it seems to be a lot of the sanctions that we put on Russia. I've explained this before. I'm not going to go through my I don't think Putin's a good person spiel again because Nick's already heard that one and mocked me for it last time as well. Did I? Well, we mock each other for everything, so I just assume. Did you say Putin was was based? No. <laughs> Don't you put words in my mouth, sir. No, uh, yeah, no. Putin's not a good person. Invading Ukraine, not a good thing. Also, sanctions on Russia when they provide ridiculous amounts of energy for the West, not a good thing when it means that everybody's going to starve and freeze over the winter. Would you agree with me? Is everything acceptable so far? Yeah, I, I, I agree that why we're we putting all this money into Ukraine and more and more people are going to question it as the harder things get. Well, as soon as... Uh, as soon as grannies start dropping off over the winter, people are really going to start to question this a little bit. Yeah, and people have found they can't afford to take in Ukrainians anymore, which is unfortunate, but it's how it is. But the globalists seem dedicated to this war. I mean, Peter Hitchens was quite reasonably saying, why can't we negotiate? We've found that Russia is militarily weaker than we thought, but at the same time, these, these sanctions are annoying, causing more than annoying, they're causing a lot of problems economically for us. Why don't we say, hey, hey do you want to end this war? But they really want the war. But you'll you'll be shouted at for saying that. You know, people will shout at you. Oh, you you don't. You know, you're not pro Ukraine. Whatever it is, it's like, no, can we just not have the war? Well, you're supporting fascists. You're supporting a right wing oligarchy. Yada 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 yada. Whereas you actually need to be supporting our left wing oligarchy. That makes it all better. You know, you're just supporting peace, really, aren't you? And you you know, you're called an appeaser. As Hitchens was well, saying, appeaser just means. You have an opinion we don't like. So. I don't want to be sending off uh, our young people to die in war, in right. a foreign war. You know, while I'm, crippling our economy. Yeah, I mean, I, yes, I am an isolationist. Thank you very much. That, I don't think that's a bad thing. But interestingly, we, Lee, we did a Carl did a recent interview for all our premium members on the website with Sebastian Gorka, who I think is aware of a bunch of this stuff, isn't he? He, he, he may well be. I wouldn't like to speak for him. Yeah, didn't he? Didn't he get into an argument uh, on GB News with with Leo? Oh, did he? Yeah, I think. No, I, no, I, aren't I you think... thinking of Lembit Opit? Oh, I'm, yes, I'm thinking of Lembit Opit. Gorka got in a different argument with Darren McCaffrey on GB. That was about when they yes, invited him was about the Trump, one. and he just shouted at him, and then Gorka said, why, why have you had me on? Why am I even on? <laughs> that was a great was <laughs> it, was, it was brilliant. Good, good question. And I don't think that this interview, given that it lasts more than five minutes, goes quite so spectacularly wrong as the interview that he did with GB News. So if you're interested in hearing about Sebastian Gorka talking about Trump and talking about the war for America's soul then you can check that out if you're a premium member which starts at five pounds per month anyway so the attitude that we've just been describing from the western leaders is summed up quite nicely from this person the uh, german chairwoman of the alliance 90 and greens party of germany a woman called annalena baerbock i think i've pronounced that right uh, uh, just explaining to everybody that you know you might starve over winter but we need to do it for ukraine so just play this clip and it'll sum it up quite nicely but if I give the promise to people in Ukraine, we stand with you as long as you need us, then I want to deliver, no matter what my German voters think, but I want to deliver to the people of Ukraine. And this is why, for me, it's important to be always very frank and clear. And this means every measure I'm taking, I have to be clear that this holds on as long as Ukraine needs me. We are facing now a winter time where we will be challenged as democratic politicians. People will go on the street and say, we cannot pay our energy prices. And I will say, yes, I know. So we help you with social measures. But I don't want to say, OK, then we stop the sanctions against uh, Russia. We will stand with Ukraine. And this means the sanctions will stay also in winter time even if it gets really tough for po politicians yeah, even if it just gets tough for the policy the poor, <laughs> the poor politicians, politicians. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah at the end but that's democracy for People you isn't pay it pay your energy bills with communism you know that was just like it's, yep. it's, don't worry we can always print some more yeah, money that never goes wrong we have some magic money yeah i heard this amazing place weimar germany <laughs> they printed all the money they wanted <laughs> nothing well. went wrong yeah and, Disgusting. and every single time with these people, there she's on the World Economic Forum. I mean, it's not a surprise anymore. It's just kind of just confirmation, really. Just, uh, oh, evil politicians saying that you should starve for Ukraine, saying yeah. that democracy is politicians not listening to the voters. 
It might just be like a fan page at this point. They just add them as soon as they hear something like that. Like, add them onto the website. <laughs> we need oh her. my god, she's amazing. Like, we need these sticker book. They just collect them all, right? <laughs> like Pokemon cards. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this one especially hates the voters. Amazing, but um, yeah. And so we get stuff like that. It sums up the attitude, and as a result, we get problems like we've got in the UK, where the politicians are refusing to step back or potentially appease Russia in any way whatsoever, like you said, and instead just decide, well, we've created this problem by government. You know what's the best thing to solve it? To just throw money from the government at people. Like We've got the cost of living payments in the UK going out in September, <clears throat> uh, saying, uh, you know, millions to be paid in September. Are you one of them? And this might be useful for some of the viewers out there living in England who want to know whether they are eligible for stuff like this, because whether or not the government printing loads and loads of extra money is a good thing, they're going to do it anyway, might as well try and get a hold of it while it's going good. Um, so they're giving out money over the next month or so, cost of living payment was a later scheme uh, to be announced to, to soften the blow of bills and such. Three types of cost of living payments, these include cost of living worth £650 for those eligible, disability cost of living worth £150, and pensioner payment worth £300, and over 7.2 million households have already received the first half of the main 650 pounds so you know the way that people's bills are like doubling mm. here's 650 quid that'll sort it for I the know. entire winter it's like somebody it's like you go out into the street and some robber mugs you beats you has his way with your woman steals your wallet and then tips you a fiver for the pleasure yeah you're right i saw zahari talking about this the other day it was, seemed woefully inadequate and just more printed money and um, because liz trust doesn't really, it's not clear what they're going to do. Boris is on holiday. We haven't got the new PM. We're about to get her, but what can they do at this point? Just a little handout, that's it. Yeah, that's that's it. And it's not going to do anything because uh, the £650 cost of living payment is only pay, is paid in two installments. And to qualify, you, claimants must be one of the following means tested benefits, or must be on one of them universal credit, working tax credit, child tax credit, pension credit, income based job seekers allowance, income related employment and uh, support allowance, and income support. So you already basically you already have to be in dire straits and living off the government to get this extra payment off of the government to help you go along, which isn't great when a lot of the people struggle are going to be like family households yeah. who aren't necessarily going to be taking government benefits off of their, um, or anything, maybe because of pride, maybe because they never needed to in the past, but all of a sudden they need to and they can't get access to this. So fantastic. And it's causing not just issues with uh, general households, but with actual public infrastructure as well. Like there was worries that schools might have to... Oh, wait, actually first. Yeah, the uh, there's a unit... Uh, people are trying to support this support each other in community ways without having to resort to the government by doing quite nice communal things like uh, hope, uh, home, uh, school uniform exchanges and such that are saving people money by, say, say your kids in like uh, year three, the next person at this place has got uniforms that they don't need anymore, that are size for the year threes, you know, you can just exchange stuff with each other. So it's quite nice. And this one, which was a Hope Uniform Exchange, helped 50 families in Western Supermare in one morning, which is quite nice. We shouldn't have to be resorting to this sort of stuff constantly because the government keeps screwing us all over, but it's nice that people can, private individuals can come together in these circumstances. Uh, but then we've got the schools in England are being told not to cut, cut days over energy prices because this might be something that actually has to happen because the schools are not getting uh, their energy bills cut. They're not getting any support for this sort of stuff. They've only got the same budgets that they had last year. And all of a sudden, if the energy prices are doubling, then over winter, there's fears that they might have to close on some days. Insane. I mean, I suppose we already found that you can just close schools entirely. So why not close them for a few days, you know, in lockdowns? But I knew, but I knew the three and four day weeks were coming. It won't just be the schools; it'll extend. To, we're going back to the seventies. It's going to be a great adventure. This whole thing. Oh, this is going to be. Hopefully, we will bring back funk and disco as well. Yeah. I mean, can we get rid of this trap crap and SoundCloud <laughs> rappers and stuff? Bring me back the Bee Gees. You're right. The reason that's in my head is because we did a, a piece on on GB News about um, you should you should become a vegetarian because it's cheaper. No, it's, it's not. already questionable. No, I know. it's not. It was basically, and, and what it was, there's a, a vegetarian uh, advocate who's basically saying, 
uh, don't see it as a as poverty. See it as an exciting adventure. <laughs> <laughs> it was like okay, so I think the three and four did, day did weeks will be an around, exciting adventure. Did she go around the streets of London and Manchester saying that's all the homeless people? I think it was actually a man. I love well, that you assume well, it was a woman though. <laughs> well, I, I mean, yeah, I hear some insufferable yeah, vegetarian saying something like that, and I immediately picture a woman. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true though. Uh, but yeah, they're saying that uh, they're not going to do that, or at least the government is saying that you can't do that. So instead, what might happen is bigger class sizes, because we know that more kids for one teacher to look after at the same time results in better education every single time. Yeah. At least that's my experience. We had class, classes of like 20 odd people, even at A level, but that wasn't big enough. Let's double that. Let's, Let's see how many that. we can get into a class. Yeah, yeah it's a new competition. Uh, they might have to delay building projects and. Uh, Light businesses, schools, just to explain it here, are not covered by the price cap on household energy bills and many will be facing big hikes in prices. General Secretary Jeff Barton said shortening the school week would only deliver relatively marginal savings and would be unpopular with families. Yes. What are the would, parents going to do? They're going to suddenly have to cancel work. What are they going to do? Yeah, I mean, parents are going to be struggling enough as it is. Uh, and then the kids are going to be off school for an extra day when they're, not supposed, when they're supposed to be at work. So they're going to have to take that day off work. So they're either going to have to waste holiday days or just not get paid for that day. So all of a sudden, the financial squeeze that we're under, people get worse. It's, it, it's, it's terrible. It's absolutely fantastic. And one of the other things is that uh, they're coming after the pubs. They're coming after the pubs next, did you know? Mm -hmm. And this is this is just awful where because energy bills, the price caps also aren't uh, for businesses. So pubs are finding their energy bills going to thirty five thousand pounds when they were thirteen thousand pounds, which is almost tripled, which is not something that any business would be expected to be able to manage. And sadly, we're not expecting them to manage. So uh, I saw a, a figure from a Guardian article as well, where it's saying about 70 percent of pubs are expected to potentially close or at least they're under threat of closing because yeah. of this yeah we cover this we had they had the lockdown now they've got the cost of living and, and i think you've got a statistic about 300 percent or something or 400 but apparently um, I, I read that some of their oh that's the cost some of their utility the costs bust. are going up 500 percent. really yeah. jesus christ so they're coming after i mean we've known they're coming after your kids for a while uh, they're coming after your job because if the kids aren't at school, you're going to have to stop working so that you're able to look after your kids. Not not necessarily a bad trade-off, just would help if you weren't also being crushed financially at the same time. They're coming after the pubs as well, so you've got nowhere to meet socially with your friends and family and just have a nice time, relax with a few beers. So that's great. And uh, then we're, they're also telling us, as if all that doesn't help uh, enough, uh, to be less squeamish about drinking sewage water. You missed the fish and chip shops. They're coming for them as well. Oh, no Josh and I covered that the other week. But uh, yeah, they're coming for the fish and chip shops through extra regulations for fishing, aren't they? Yeah, and isn't it also is it also to do with, is it also to do with the war and or is it I would imagine that they're not also hel uh, being helped by the price increases as well. So coming for the fish and chips, coming for the pubs, coming for your kids, coming for your job, and now they're telling you to drink sewage water. This is the world on leftism, really, isn't it? I mean, is it? I mean, it's the WF, whatever you want to say. It's just I think leftism sums it up. Everything's collapsing. I, I I just think never mind even the war and the lockdowns. Just just a results based culture is incredibly rare. I've found just doing things properly. You know, we've got a whole, there was always mediocrity, right? But there wasn't such an extensive ideology based on promoting weakness and failure. That's got to have an impact eventually, don't you think? Well, I, I think it's all intentional. I think the promotion of an ideology based on weakness and failure that doesn't teach people to be resilient or be able to manage their emotions, that teaches people to only exist in the moment and not think about the future. Right, you know, that's and white supremacy. That's uh, yeah, obviously prudence and yeah, delayed <laughs> gratification. Jordan Peterson recommended that, so it's you know verboten, you're not allowed to do such a thing. It's all intentional because it makes people weak, makes people soft, people aren't able to look after themselves and then this sort of stuff comes about and the only solution that people have to, the, uh, to themselves is what can more government yeah more government uh, yeah I, I, I mean i haven't got a great thesis on it and i haven't been being talked about but i just think all this collapse although you can say yeah it's schwab and everything but in a, in a broader sense it just must be this we, we built everything we built was based on certain principles and we've abandoned all of them yeah uh, absolutely but uh, this was this came from a article written in the sunday times i think it was where a man who's a member of the environment agency a government uh, institution uh, sir j where is his name here sir james sir james bevan uh, said that if we start to recycle sewage water so i think what normally happens with tap water i looked into it to make sure i wasn't getting it wrong so normally you, you know you get reservoirs <clears throat> 
uh, and you get rivers basically just filled up by the rain. You get the water from there, you filter it, you treat it for water purification, etc., and then it goes through the taps. And as part of the pipes in your taps, there's a mechanism in there that separates all the salt content from it. So you just get nice clean water. Whereas this is just saying, let's get, get the sewage water and then just get it straight to the water for purification, which might work, which, which might work, but just on a purely aesthetic level, no. No, I, 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 I feel like being told that what we're drinking is purified sewage water is, if nothing else, just on an aesthetic level, humiliating to yeah. the average person. We've worked out where the next pandemic's coming from. <laughs> yeah, and that's also, yeah, depending on how well you trust the company's ability to treat all of this sewage water, which, you know, given how great all of our infrastructure has been going recently... I, I don't necessarily trust it, but so uh, he sa he says uh, we need to remember where water comes from when we turn on the tap. What st comes out started in a river, lake, or aquifer. The more we take, the more we drain those sources and put stress on nature and wildlife. If we're going to get there, all uh, we are all going to have to think differently. Some of these measures will be unpopular because once again, democracy. Uh, I think people got sold democracy on the idea it was people governing themselves, right? People choosing people who represent their interests. No, democracy actually means politicians and unelected officials telling you what you're going to make you do. That's they, all it is. But they just say, it will be unpopular. Closing schools will be unpopular. So will drinking sewage and eating <laughs> quotes. But we're going to do them all. Yeah, and he, he finishes off saying, future governments will need to show political will. The political will to humiliate their subjects. And crush their people. And crush the people. So this is what we've got to look forward to this winter. Huddle close to your families. Maybe invest in some wood fires. Although Rory's told me that there's some issues with that as well. Do whatever you can to stay warm. And uh, remember not to trust the government. If you appreciated that segment from the podcast of the Lotus Eaters, you can go to lotuseaters.com to get access to all the premium content we have on the site. Such as this video that we did together on the politics and philosophy of They Live between me and Carl. If you want to follow what else Carl's putting out, you can follow him on Getter at, at Carl Benjamin on Getter. Thank you and goodbye. Bye.